Welcome to the Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. Larry is the author of over 40 books, the founder of Dove International, a worldwide family of churches and ministries in six continents, and has over 50 years of leadership experience. He and his guests will share inspirational leadership insights from their journey with God. These insights, gleaned from serving leaders in many nations, will transform your life and leadership. For more information on Larry's books and resources, visit LarryKreider.com. Hello, Larry Kreider here with the Larry Kreider Leadership Podcast. We interview people from all over the world who are involved in areas of leadership so we can learn and grow together. I'm learning so much. With me today is Dr. Peter Bunton. Welcome. Thank you, Larry. Great to be here. We're so glad you're here. Now, you've got this brand new book just came out, Preparing to Go, Your Guide to Short-Term Missions, that I'm very, very excited about. It's so practical, down-to-earth. It's just going to help thousands and thousands of people. We'll get that in a few minutes, but let's talk about a bit of your background so we know why you would have written a book like this. Sure. So talk to me about your leadership journey and missions. Sure. Well, thanks, Larry. Um, yeah, well, obviously, I come from uh, Great Britain originally. And we can tell by your accent. That's right. <laughs> I still don't sound too pensive. Don't, don't lose it. Okay. We love it. <laughs> okay, I'll try not to. Um, when I was, I think I was 20 years old, I was uh, studying at university uh, in Britain. But then I, then I went over to Greece and yes. I started to study there. And I was living in this other country, another language, and I was trying to speak sure. the language. And I realized that there were all these people who had a completely different experience to me. They didn't know God in the way I did. They had many questions. And there were a couple of missionaries there in that city. And so I joined up with them and I just learned to share my faith uh -huh. to Greek young people, particularly university students in my very faltering, imperfect Greek. And something inside of me just stirred saying, I wanna do this. This is the kind of thing Beautiful. I wanna do in my life. So it ended up a few years later, I joined a mission agency, Youth with a Mission, and then was involved with going to many nations to preach the gospel, many short-term teams, some longer-term projects. And after a few years, I found myself in leadership. And I realized that leadership in missions meant it wasn't just me, one person, right. or one team going Correct. somewhere. I could influence far more people to go to other nations and other peoples. So one of the things that we ran was a program we called Go Europe. And our intention was to send a mission team to every nation in Europe. Wow. And this was in the 90s. And at the time, there were 32 countries. So we ran this program and recruited teams to preach the gospel in Sweden and Latvia and Poland and Portugal and Malta. That's and so amazing. On. So I realized through that, hey, in leadership, I maybe I'm not going to get to these 32 right. countries, but I can send others and train and prepare others. So that just began a, a, a journey of leadership in missions and things developed in other ways. For example, some of my long term team really had a heart for some of the unreached peoples in India. And so we were able to start a work in India to a particular tribe who were really completely unevangelized. And for the next few years, we sent teams there. We had long-term missionaries. And we began to see some people from this tribe uh, come to know Jesus. So over the years, the nature of quite <clears throat> what I have done has changed. But leadership has been a uh, office or a capacity to help motivate people and mobilize people to go. That's great. Now, you, you mentioned you and your team were training missionaries to go to all these countries in Europe. Did you get to most of the countries in Europe? Uh, I have been to most of them. I mean, you and your teams. Yes, all the teams, yes. we. It took three years. Mission accomplished. It took three years, yes. I have to confess when it didn't happen the first year completely, I felt disappointed right. uh, because we only reached 18 different nations. Only 18. <laughs> I felt disappointed. And then I remember that occurring to me, you know, this isn't failure. Maybe we didn't reach 32 in year right. one, but 18, that's, that's amazing. half of them. And so we just extended the program for year two and year three. And by the end of year three, we had had missionary work of some 
form in every one of those 32 nations. Well, I me- so. remember when I, you told me that way back when I met you and you were, you know, giving leadership to YOM in, in, in parts of England at that, at that point. So what are things you wish you would have known that you know now, like back in these early days? Yes. Well, probably what I've just said is one of them. I wish I had been a bit more patient. Okay. <laughs> Um, because I felt I'd heard from God yes. and it was a, a great vision and a great plan and we had people committed to it, I just felt it would fall into place sure. quickly and happen. And I think I realized that often things take longer than you think. Mm-hmm. It just seems to happen in many situations in life. And God uses that length to teach sure. us things. Patience, the need for prayer and ongoing yes. prayer and uh, sustainable ways to move forward and so on. So I think that's that's one thing, the whole thing of patience. Um, I would say perhaps I've learned a bit more to listen to those inner little niggles. Mm. Sometimes you just have a feeling something's not quite right here, something's right. amiss, but I probably would just plow on in the early days. We have sure. a vision, we have a goal. Right. And sometimes those things, God was speaking to us about slowing down or paying attention maybe to a potential problem so i would say that Um, and then also i think i've learned more about proper planning including financial planning for the future Hmm. i think in the early days we just felt god spoke and god will provide and it will happen and in a sense it does but often god is in good business planning and fundraising strategy or even that business and missions and following the Holy Spirit, they're not opposites. They can work together uh, to finance the the kingdom of God. So I think I've I've learned a few things in that whole area of planning and the financial aspect of missions. uh, So today, um, you're no longer leading YWAM in England. Obviously, you're living here in America, you live in Pennsylvania, and you're leading Dove Mission International. Uh, with the Dove International Family of Churches, and you're working with, you know, with missionaries all over the United States of America. And so, I mean, obviously, you're, you've learned a lot in the past that you're applying today as you're training missionaries today. So, I know you believe so much in team building. Yes. So, let's talk about that. There's a leadership podcast, and we want to get into your book here in just a moment. But talk to me about team building, the importance of team building, how you do that, what you've learned about that. Yes, well, you're right. I think teams are very important. No man or woman should really be working on their own. Um, I think teams bring a safety. They bring different perspective. Things that I, even if I'm the leader of the team, I'm not going to see everything. I'm not going to be aware of everything. And so having this perspective of the team is helpful and brings wisdom. So I think I've seen the importance of team. And I think the way we've tried to build team is firstly to share vision. Where are we going? What's the goal here? And then people often respond to that. But also, I think I've learned that building a team is also, as a leader, expressing my need. Mm. That people are often want to be part of something when they know they can make a contribution sure. according to their gifts. And sometimes leaders just want to forge ahead or appear very you know having things together but i found be honest be real express needs and it actually helps build team i think also the whole thing of knowing my strengths and my limitations very good there are some things i am gifted in Mm -hmm. and it's not being uh, it's not a lack of humility to say that but there are some areas where i'm not very gifted or things that i do not see so being aware of what i contribute But really, where are my limitations? And then trying to staff those limitations, have people around me, have people on a team who are good at some of the things that I am not good at. Very good. I think those are some of the principles that we have tried to um, apply as we've developed teams. And I think, too, I would say as a leader, listen to the other voices, including dissent. Mm -hmm. It's important to listen when people disagree. Because usually they have something to say. They could be completely right. They could be half right or just 10% right. But right. usually there is something Very good. to learn from that. So I think I've also learned don't be fearful of disagreement and dissent. That's and good. Leave space for it and listen to people. And build teams and 
Yes. Place people on those teams that are different than you. Is that what he's saying? I think so as well. And I think also I would mention the whole attitude of gratitude mm. and always thanking people Beautiful. on my team. Thank for them for their participation, their volunteering, their contribution. When they do a job and maybe it's not done in well enough or there is correction, still thank them for what they've done. Still major on the positives they've done very good which then helps bring some of the suggestions for improvement or updating yeah you do that really really well now you've been a leader for a long time peter and i've known you for a long time so have you ever made any mistakes and if so what did that look like (laughs) i think one of the mistakes that i have made and i think it could be a you know a tendency within me is i've wanted to please people Uh and as a leader, sometimes you have to make decisions, That's right. uh, either individually or with your team. And of course, not everyone is always in agreement, as we were saying. And I think particularly in the early days, I wanted people to be happy. So I would perhaps avoid making a decision because I knew it might upset some people or uh, some people would not be on board. And I think that's something I've learned that... Part of leadership is making decisions, and often there will be disagreements or, right. or, or dissent. So I think that's been uh, one key thing that you know I continually work on. It's that balance between being a person of consensus, right. and hearing right. from everyone, yet it's really so good. stepping out when it needs to happen. So good. Most leaders deal with that that same issue. So what would you say to a younger leader who would ask you for advice on? how to be a healthy team leader, what would you say? Well, I would say be self-aware. Okay. Study yourself. And of course, some of these personality profiles and things can help. Just know, as a leader, know how you operate, what your strengths are, your limitations, but even your style as to how you Mm -hmm. process information and make decisions. I think that actually is is quite um, crucial. Um, I think also I somehow in this I don't know if it's quite answering your question, but I think I'd want to come back to prayer. That Good. a crucial thing in leadership is prayer, praying for those you know, who yes. are on your team or your staff, praying with them praying together as a team for God to give wisdom and um, understanding and so on. And I think when I look around the world and so many things we've been involved in, yes, we can have great strategy. Yes, we can train right. people and play so people. good, Peter. But I can think of examples where I know it was the prayer that really mm-hmm. did mm-hmm. the work. Um, for example, we have friends in another nation, in Germany, And they have a a most amazing work helping people who've been trafficked or who are forced into the sex industry. And they're incredible people and have credible vision and they lead well. But they know, and they didn't know this at the time, but before they ended up as workers in Europe, the, the city that they're now in, for I think it was seven years, a number of years beforehand, some local people were so committed to this whole issue of helping people mm. who'd been trafficked, who were forced into prostitution, that they would just very regularly, weekly, go out and pray on the streets and intercede. And for, for years, and it came to a point where they felt the Holy Spirit say to them, your work is complete. And that was the very week or the following week that our missionaries showed Beautiful. up. Beautiful. And they didn't know any of this story. Right, we right. didn't know it for a long time afterwards. And I think I've seen that, that the strategy, the team is important, but the work of prayer is so often so what prepares the way so good. and brings the fruit. So I'd always want to keep that out there when we talk And about so any missionary needs to make sure they have proper prayer covering, they have prayer teams. Yes. Correct. Yes. And yes. you've done that so well. I mean, you've led so many different kind of teams over the years. And I, I've you know, known you for many years. And I know one special thing you've done year, year after year, I remember many years ago, was you would develop these prayer teams. Yes. And these prayer teams would go into countries and, yes. and prepare the way in the spirit, so to speak. Yes. You want to say anything about that? Mm-hmm. Yes. That was amazing. Of course, yes. I mean, we have had intercession teams in many places, in France and Netherlands, Bulgaria, in Myanmar, right. in 
you know, India, in all kinds of nations around the world. And so sometimes people, I don't know if they struggle with this concept, but sending a team to pray to intercede it's not quite doing things in the normal way you can't right. show we've built a building or we have trained this many people in a seminar or so many right. people came to christ through our, our preaching but they've been strategic because of all that i've been saying preparing in the spirit is crucial and even as that prayer team goes we have often been in a place where things happen right in front of us. Mm -hmm. People have just shown up out of the blue and asked us questions. And I know subsequently uh, they've come to Christ. Yes. Uh, after we left, they were in touch with the church leader or the missionary. So sometimes even the praying itself, it literally opens things up where we are and we start to see things happen. And also it's been helpful in terms of encouragement for the missionaries or the church sure. planters in whichever nation it is. And we've even had people say to us, you came not to speak, not to have a conference right, with a banner right. with your name on or right. whatever. You just came and you went to our villages. You went mm. to the places where we want to start a church out in the middle of nowhere. And you just sat on the ground and prayed with us. And I see how it builds a relationship with people across international Beautiful. cultural barriers. And people feel so encouraged in their work that God would send someone from the other side of right. the world right. to sit on the ground with them in their village Beautiful. and pray for the birthing of a new church mm. or a work among children sure. or whatever it would be. So we have done that. Uh, we've tried to encourage people from other nations to participate so we've had Americans and Bulgarians together in Asia. We've had friends from Canada and mm. Colombia working together in Europe. Beautiful. So it's also provided an opportunity to work in these international settings of collaboration. Beautiful. Well, you have trained so many missionaries in so many different kinds of teams over the years, and you have such insights inside you. I'm just grateful that you're starting to get some things in in print. You're a, yeah. You are a published author. And uh, so you've been putting some things recently in writing about all of this. There's only one Peter, and so, you know, there's only one of you to go around, but in, your books can touch thousands and millions, yes. and that's the blessing of that. So let's talk about that, that a little bit. I mean, tell us about what you've been writing. Sure. Thank you. Yes, I mean, I agree. Writing and communications is important. Um, so in this last about year, just over a year or about uh, 14 months, there are two publications that we have worked on here. Uh, one is called Evolving Missions, 24 Voices Reflecting on Missions Today. And this is a whole bunch of short chapters because we wanted people to understand that world missions is diverse yeah. and we can all play a role. So in the book Evolving Missions, we have uh, content on children and missions and how women can be involved with missions, missions with and helping people with special needs. Beautiful. We look at issues such as business and missions, mm. cultural adaptation, the role of worship and missions, prayer and missions. So we cover many aspects really to show the breadth and the diversity uh, of the missionary task today. And it was wonderful to have many young people join us in writing yes. and contributing to this this work yeah it's a great book anybody anyone's interested in this book again it's all in the show notes check out the show notes you want to get all of peter to learn more from him i mean we had peter on our podcast just some months ago talking about succession because of things you'd written and people connecting with you on, on that and if you have a heart to learn more about missions check the show notes you can get a hold of peter like just an hour ago i got an email from a, a friend who's a pastor in the region saying we need help yeah, i heard you have peter button on your team <laughs> is there a way we connect with him and teach us about missions you know so you do this so well now and the Bobby Mission is a great book. The other book, Preparing to Go, I want you to talk about in just a moment here. I love this book because you have trained so many people to go, short-term missionaries, long-term missionaries, and you learn so much. So much of it is just practical stuff. Talk to us about Preparing to Go, your guide to short-term missions. Yes, yeah, sure. By the way, every pastor in America should have this book. I mean, I really believe that. It's excellent. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, thank you, Larry. Yes, this is our most recent work, Preparing to Go, Your Guide to Short-Term Missions. 
And we wrote this because we do believe in short-term missions. So I want to say that because there has been criticism of short-term right. mission teams and probably justifiably sure. so. Um, not all teams have been fruitful or successful right. and so on. So that really gave us an added impetus to write a book like this. So what it is, is all kinds of uh, preparation to go and then how to be successful on your short-term team. So we cover all kinds of things, practical things, such as what to pack, the whole thing of passports and applying for visas, uh, <laughs> immunizations, great. healthcare issues. Then also how to build team unity, how to pray. And then when the team is you know, in the field, functioning and ministering, how to work together well, how to adapt to another culture. Practical things such as how to give your testimony, speaking through an interpreter. So good. And then even information on how to evaluate when you come home, how to learn the lessons from your mission team and how to apply it in the rest of your life and still be focused on missions, even when you're home and returning to you know, school or work or whatever it would be. So we put this together to help leaders, to help participants. It's also partly a workbook. We have some you know, blank sheets for people to write their testimony, to journal about their experiences. So we wanted to get a lot in there, but also to keep it short enough that it's easy to take with you. Right, right. So the goal would be that everyone participating on a team will have this workbook to prepare, but to take with them. Uh, and then you can uh, work on it even while you're on a mission team. So that's the kind of goal for this. Those are the kinds of things that we uh, want to cover. Excellent. You know, I remember well, when I was a young pastor, we were sending our first mission team to Europe and to Scotland. And we, I didn't have this book, Peter. I needed this book. And so we had this whole team, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 young people on this team. And they got to the airport, and one of the young people on the team realized he didn't have a visa. In fact, he didn't even have a passport, I don't think, you know. And, I mean, he really should have had this book, yeah. and I should have this yes. book. He still reminds me when he sees me of how I messed that one up, you know. Yes. So sure. this is excellent. Sure. It's just, I mean, I'm just going to read a few things you have on there. You've got, you know, guidelines for team unity. You've got team agreement. You've got language learning, dress guidelines. These things are so important. Using your phone overseas, how does that work? Social media guidelines, vaccinations. You know, the right travel documents. That's what I miss. I needed your book, Peter, in, the, in those days. And, uh, and you deal with culture and then on the mission field. How you did this in such a small book, I don't know how you did that, but this is fantastic. With the 52 pages, including room to write notes in the back, it's amazing. Sure. Well, thank you. Yeah, we wanted it full enough yet short enough. So one thing we have done in a few places is we've inserted a QR code or a link Great. to something on our website. So for example, we Great. have forms for evaluation and debrief. Sure. So some of the other information and resources, this book links to right. it. Yeah. And and Hillary Vargas, your assistant, really helped you with this, did a great job. Absolutely. She was a missionary to Moldova years ago. And, yes. and again, this is this is for from practitioners to practitioners, really. So I yes. love it, love it, love it. Is there anything else you want to say about this this book here before I ask you a few more questions? Well, we do also try and uh, deal with the whole issue of how a team can be really fruitful. Okay. So if you want, I'd love to talk about that. Yeah, let's just do it. Let's moment. do it. It's the practical and spiritual preparation, but there are some other issues. And <clears throat> one of the things that we try and bring out through the book is that. There are some really good principles and guidelines, things such as for a team to be fruitful, there needs to be an invitation from a church, from missionaries, whoever, who have a long term strategy for the place you're going. That's excellent. Because we don't want our teams just to go in and be lone rangers and right. 10 days later, two days later, come out again. What is the long-term objective? Is there a long-term strategy? Very good. So we encourage teams that are part of a long-term strategy. Um, also, the whole issue of partnership. We don't want our foreign team showing up feeling they know all the answers, right. they know how to do things, or they do it and ignore the local right. people. So the whole thing of partnership, working together. Beautiful. For example, we even had a, a construction team in an African nation where the Americans and the local people, they literally work together in laying bricks and laying block to build a church building. 
but also adapting some of the local methods and materials, not just coming with our understanding of how we do things. So I think that's very important. And the other thing I, I would say is the whole issue of sustainability. Mm. Teams are worth the money. They're worth the effort if what they are going to do is sustainable. If the local people have a vision for it to continue after the team okay. has gone. And that inevitably raises questions of finance and resources. Because what we don't want our teams to do is create dependency where we go to a certain country, do something, and then people are really dependent on that foreign team for years to come to sure. come back and maintain it or to provide finances and resources. So we try and work on the whole issue of is this a, a sustainable project for the future that the local people really carry in their hearts. And so those are some ways we try and work and we believe they help bring mm, about beautiful. successful short-term missions, beautiful. but within a longer-term strategy. Right. Preparing to go, your guide to short-term missions, so that you can pick that up on the Devon International website, Amazon.com. Check out the show notes. All the information is, is there. If you want to get a hold of Peter, you can also get a hold of him by going to the show notes. Peter, you've, you have been involved in missions now for so long. Give us some examples of different kinds of teams that you've trained. I mean, yes. there's a lot of different teams you've trained in different types. Yes. Well, I think our value, our ethos has been that just about anyone can play a part in the Great Commission okay. of taking the knowledge of Jesus Christ to the nations, whatever our gifts. So we've always tried to provide vehicles for people to use their gifts Beautiful. in the service of God in the nations. Beautiful. So... Yes, classically, teams have gone and preached and evangelized, and that happens. But we've had teams where people are really gifted at working with children. Mm -hmm. So maybe they've helped with children's ministry or trained other local people in how to minister with children. We've even had business people go and do training and seminars, of course, at the invitation of the local people, on how the people can set up businesses and be financially astute because in many parts of the world there's great poverty. We've had the prayer teams we've mentioned before. We've had people train in kind of counseling and trauma, debriefing and so on. So really, whether you're a construction worker or an intercessor or a business person or a children's minister or an evangelist, sure. usually there's a role that you can so play good. in world missions. Mm. So we have tried to construct different projects, medical missions, for example. We've had nurses and doctors go to Iraq and Peru exactly. to help in local situations, but even to be involved with training of local medical personnel. Mm. So then it becomes sustainable. So really, whatever your skill or gift, we can That's probably good. use you in missions. And we've tried to provide teams that release people according to their mm -hmm. gifts Missions is not just for the Bible teacher, the doctor, or the evangelist. There are other gifts that we have that can be used in proclaiming Christ to the nations. Yeah. You know, Peter, one of the main reasons I believe missions is so important, even short-term missions, is because a week or two or three or four in another nation will change your life forever. Correct. We think everyone's like yes. us. Everyone's experiencing life the way we do, especially here in America, and it's so wrong. It's yes. just not like that at all. And so I remember when I served as a pastor for many years, one of my goals was as many people as possible get involved in some kind of missions. And you don't have to be a long-term missionary. If you go for two weeks, go and bless another nation, because they come back changed. Yes. And the hearts stay in those nations. It's amazing, isn't it? That's right. It, it certainly changes the people who go. Yeah. We learn so much about ourselves, our home culture, and we realize how kind of bound we are in our thinking. Sure. Uh, and then there's so much to learn as we go to other nations. People's love for God, their spirituality, their so worship true. can speak to us. Mm. And we learn a lot. Lot. And then what I find so encouraging, and I think you alluded to this, is longer term relationships and partnerships Correct. can come from that short term team. 
where people come back and continue to pray for or go back another time to help in, yes. in, in that place. So there is long-term fruit in some of those relationships uh, because of the short-term team. And would you say that most long-term missionaries got their start in short-term missions? There is some research that, that says that. Uh, in fact, there was some research, I think, just last year that really indicated those who are going to missions or who open to it it's because they've been somewhere or they know a missionary. So it's that personal experience or relationship that God uses right. to kind of change people's heart and give them vision. So yes, that certainly is the case. So it's we've prayed many, many times that because of our short-term programs, people mm. will develop a heart for longer-term missions. We here with Dove International, for example, we run a six-month mission internship for young people who've maybe gone for a week or two sure. and they go a bit longer yeah. and do language learning. Beautiful. Uh, we place people longer term uh, for a couple of years. So all kinds of things can come from this. Great. Peter, I have two more questions. Yes. Uh, one has to do with preparing to go your guide to short-term missions. Uh, my question for that is, who's it for? Who should get this book? Sure. I would say this is for anyone who's leading a mission team or, or thinking of planning one. There's a lot of good advice for leaders. Anyone who is going on a mission team, this is a workbook as we said there's all Amazing. kinds of practical advice there's checklists even what to pack and what not to pack and these kinds of things beautiful um but also i think other mission leaders might find it helpful and also you know church leaders if you're involved with taking the gospel to other nations there's some good things in here that i think will help the leadership of right. the church know how to go about this in a responsible way exactly anyone in any type of leadership in the kingdom of god this book will help you help others prepare to go and go to another culture last question anything else you want our listeners to know about either missions or leadership peter this is your chance I think God is a God who has always called us to go to the nations. We see it Amen. even in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 12, Abraham was called to go. God wants to bless the nations, but through us. So I think that's the kind of bottom line. Mm. And the end goal is the glory of God and the knowledge of that glory taken to all the nations. So I think this mission task is for, for today. God is calling many of us. We need the guidance of the Spirit, but good practical preparation that is, is part of what the Holy Spirit wants mm. to do. So that's why we, we wrote you. something like this. Yeah, and I just hope and pray that God will call many of us and we'll Amen. all find the role that we have in world missions. Beautiful. Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. The book, Preparing to Go, Your Guide to Short-Term Missions and Evolving Missions, or other books and, and uh, key articles that Peter's written on other subjects. And you can check out the show notes for that. Again, you can pick up these books on Amazon or you can pick them up by going to get a great price um, on Dev International Bookstore. And uh, we learned so much together today about missions, short-term missions, long-term missions, and they need to be properly prepared. And I love the way you've done that. So thank, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Larry. It's been a joy. So God bless you, and we look forward to having you join me again real soon. Thank you for listening to Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. If you want more information about any of Larry's books, daily devotionals, small group resources, or any other teachings, go to LarryKreider.com. 